Matthew Lee, Inner City Press, on behalf of the Free UN Coalition for Access, thanks a lot for the briefing. It's very interesting. I actually want to cover the UN, so I want to ask you about the UN, not just as a venue for your event, but as kind of a participant in all this. There's something called the UN Global Compact, which companies sign up to. It has an environmental component. But recently, a, a, a company was thrown out of it called uh, CEFC China Energy, but not because it's an oil company, but because it was, had been paying bribes in the UN to buy oil concessions, seeking, this is alleged in the Southern District. So I wanted to know, do you think that in the principles that you have, that, that the UN can play a, a greater role, at least in getting disclosure, maybe of the companies that join the Global Compact in terms of their investment portfolio? And you had a speech by the Deputy Secretary General, and it was a great, great speech. You may, may not know, but there, there's a, there are questions about, as a Nigerian minister, her signing of certificates for endangered rosewood being sent to China. So it's sort of, I guess, I wanted to know, it, this is not your problem, but I'm saying it, when you come to the UN, do you think that it's a, it's a, it's a, could it do more to participate positively in the, in the, the agenda that you're putting forward? Thanks okay. a lot. I think there's a couple of questions in there that would be really interesting to tease out. Um, the first being this question of accountability um, and, and how do you actually bring together both the environmental commitments that are being made but also the governance considerations uh, around ensuring that uh, when investors are making these commitments, uh, how are we actually ensuring that they're delivering, you know, where does the imperative come from from ensuring accountability through some of the existing initiatives that we see. Uh, and then secondly, I think there's also a really interesting question uh, around global coverage and how is this initiative going to work in the different jurisdictions. I wonder if I could ask one of the, uh, where there are different uh, regulatory regimes uh, as well. And so I, I just wonder if I could ask maybe one of the panel participants to talk firstly to this question of um, uh, accountability around these sorts of initiatives and, and the importance of reporting and disclosure and supporting that, and supporting that as well. So uh, I will say that um, in terms of the uh, corporate engagement and uh, uh, what we will be doing working with companies is that uh, you know, we, governance is very much a, a key piece of what we're looking for. Uh, and uh, transparency, accountability, uh, the disclosure that we're going to be asking companies to uh, do, uh, hopefully in a more um, uh, standardized format, uh, I hope will overcome some of the issues that you've identified. Um, I do think there's a strong expectation about um, um, maintaining or building strong governance around uh, the transition that companies will be uh, undertaking. It's, yeah, I yes. just, and I just, uh, I'm sorry, we done, Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, go ahead, Jack. Uh, also, I just I think the Paris Agreement just changes the entire terms of engagement for all of us. I mean, now we do have global agreement, global expectations, global accountability. Um, um, that brings to bear a whole a whole different work stream around these activities than we've ever had before. Um, so I do think it's a new day in terms of that um, uh, transparency that we have around what we're doing. I wonder if I could also just pick this up in terms of the steps that we've seen in the green bond market as well, where the disclosure and accountability around use of proceeds has been so important to ensuring the strong growth of this as, a, uh, as an investment stream in supporting low carbon. I wonder maybe, Fred, if I could ask you to comment on that as well. Yes, uh, I'd just like to, uh, to, to, to try to, to on, on the previous question about the, uh, um, I think that if we take one step back, um, a couple of years ago, three, five years ago, we had only, um, and it was already fantastic, uh, leaders. We had here and there um, asset owners uh, pushing the envelope and so on. Over the past two to uh, 18 months, two years, suddenly we have shifted to the next level. Now we are talking about um, five, 10, 20 trillion dollars in terms of um, of engagement, in terms of mobilization, and so on and so on. So my point here is that we are reaching a kind of critical mass uh, that makes uh, this force uh, almost unstoppable. Uh, it's based on the risk management, so it's based on the, on the fiduciary responsibility. Um, so it's working, it's spreading. We could say that it should uh, work uh, quicker, faster, uh, but it's already taking action. Um, so you have here and there stock exchanges, for example, working on disclosure. Um, and if it's not fast enough, the asset owners are putting the pressure on the asset manager that are putting pressure on the, uh, on the, uh, on the corporates. So really, I think we are, we are observing now a, a massive change of, of the landscape. 
Um, does it mean that we don't need a UN anymore? No, uh, because we still need to recognize the, uh, the leaders. It's always complicated to, uh, to push the envelope. So it has a real uh, utility function to, uh, to have the, uh, the leaders um, on stage in order to reinforce their will, uh, their commitment to, uh, to, to this. Um, on the second question about the green bonds, um, yes, um, the market is booming. Uh, it's a very new market. So like all the new markets, it's still uh, looking for uh, some standouts and so on. Uh, it's one of the objectives of the uh, IFC project that I mentioned before. Uh, this project is very ambitious. Um, in, a, in a nutshell, um, IFC wants to uh, accelerate uh, the issue of green bonds in emerging markets. We have heard Apple and so on issuing green bonds. It's fantastic. But for the moment, it's um, almost only in developed markets, so the developing markets were lagging, and IFC wants to um, to tackle or to handle that question, and for that they are launching a very innovative PPP uh, capital market with an asset manager, Amundi, and in parallel they are setting up a, a technical assistance facility aiming at helping issuers issue green bonds, and part of this um, of this uh, facility will be dedicated to um, reinforcing the standards around green bonds mm. in order to uh, facilitate the life the lives of the investors and to uh, uh, in order as well to avoid any um, uh, greenwashing into into the future mm. so you're absolutely right that we need to we have a big movement and it's fantastic and we need to tackle the little uh, remaining issues one after one in a very pragmatic manner uh, P Peter, can I perhaps ask you to make some, some, some last comments here? I think we might be running in on time. Yes, there's some comments on, on UN's uh, role, role going forward. I think, first of all, it's, uh, it's been impressive the way UN, during the last five or six years, or maybe a little longer, have reached out to the civil society, uh, among that, corporates and, and uh, in institutional investors. You didn't see that before, and, and UN was actually... Um, a, a, an instrument in creating the dialogue between the investors, the corporates, and the political system. And I think that's extremely important going forward. The second part is, uh, was, was touched about, we still need a lot of uh, more investments uh, going into emerging markets. If we look at where most of the, the investments until now have been also from, from people here at the, at, at the table, it's been in the developed markets. But if we look at where the real problems are, we need much more investments in emerging markets.